OK, um, last year, here we go. So, so last year, LLVM Dev, I ranted a lot about you know GPU test coverage, CI, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I took some of my own medicine, and actually went ahead and figured, okay, let's let's improve test coverage of our GPU backends and and, and all of our GPU handling and so on and so forth. So, what do we use for testing? We use the LLVM test suite. So, let's run the LLVM test suite on GPUs, right? Easy peasy. So, all of this works with direct GPU compilation. Last year at LLVM Dev. Chile, who did all the work I'm just presenting, um, presented about this. And people were not super you know, into it. But I think it was just miscommunicated. So what happens is you take a legacy CPU code, whatever you have, any code, right? With quotes. You take a legacy CPU code, and you compile it with our modified client. And what falls out is an executable that will execute your legacy CPU code on the GPU entirely. It will call main on the GPU. That's what happens. How does it work? Um, there's three components to it. I cannot show two in two. I will show here and the third one you have to talk to me after. Um, I show the main wrapper, I show the user wrapper. Those are effectively source files that we include into, the, into each application, into each translation unit. Uh, we have a partial C, all of that doesn't really matter. What matters is we have the RPC thread and offload library there. Effectively, we, whenever we encounter an external function call inside of your program, so, so think, of, think of your program running in, like it's compiled in LTO mode, monothelitic LTO, so we see everything. If there is an external function call, let's call to, let's say to a function called like fscanf, that takes, you know, a file pointer, a format string, and a couple of other pointers where it writes into, we will take that call and we will replace it with effectively an RPC call to the host and then execute f scanf, a variadic call on the host, filling all those values in and copying the results back. So we, we translate all external calls into like RPCs to the host, move all the associated objects to the host, run it there, move all the objects back. That's what happens, okay? So this is, this is the, user, the user header. So we kind of pre-include this into every file, just for good measure. Um, and effectively what it does, it, it just renames your main into user main. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. And then we have this file that we, that we compile and then link into your application. This is the, the effectively the starter code that will start a kernel on the, on the GPU and then execute user main. Pretty much all it does, it maps the, the arguments such that it you know, can access the arguments on the device, but that's, that's pretty much it. So with those two things together and the automatic handling of external function calls, you can now execute arbitrary CPU code on your GPU. Why would we do that? We did that to uh, multiple reasons. Initially, we did this to actually do scaling studies of parallelism on a GPU. So we have parallelism on, on the host, and before we port everything to the GPU, do all the memory transfers and so on and so forth, we wanna know if our algorithms are good, if they're going to scale properly on a GPU, or if we have to change the layout, the da like data layout, the algorithm, and so on and so forth. So here we show, I show like two proxy applications for signs, and what you see, the left bar is a manually offloaded version of it, and the right bar, like it's always like groups of two, the right bar is then the automatically offloaded host version. And what we measure here is, you know, how well does it scale? Like, what is the performance improvement compared to the host? And what, what, you, what I'm trying to show is that it kind of matches, so the offloaded, like the automatic offloaded version matches the hand offloaded version, which is good. That's kind of what we want to see. And what you also see is that we can, you know, there's, in these apps, there are two different methods to do computation. One is called event-based, one is called history-based. Don't ask me, it's some science stuff. And then the event-based one was ported by hand to a GPU. The history one was not. But we can still predict how well the history one is going to perform on a GPU by just taking the host code and running it on a GPU. And then seeing how that scales. And it turns out, you see, for RS Bench, for example, that, that kind of performs the same. For XS Bench 2, we know that while this suggests history-based method is reasonable for the GPU, we know it doesn't scale out if you increase the problem size. But that's a different story. 
Okay, and then we did you know, another study here where we just looked at the parallel regions in the host code um, and compared their performance relative to scaling that parallel region onto the entire GPU. So how would that, you know, how would that scale on a GPU? And what turns out is that we can match the manually offloaded version. So we can accurately predict um, how well a code will execute on a GPU, like a host code. Okay. Now let's go back to the LMM test suite. This is what I kind of promised, right? So this is like the interactive part. What do you think, how many of the 2007 tests that we ran from the LLVM test suite, like the LLVM slash LLVM test, how many of those successfully compiled, run, and verified when run on an NVIDIA GPU? Give me a number. 90%. 90%. Do we have anyone that, that disagrees with that? 50%. 50%, okay. I heard yesterday I asked those questions a couple of times to people, and I heard like everything from 20 to, you know, um, to, to, yeah, 80 was yesterday the highest. Turns out 86 and a half, uh, 86, uh, 0.7 percent of the tests in the LLVM test suite, we could just run and they verified correctly on the GPU. So that's a start. Now, now, what are our setup? So we had we we run this on an NVIDIA GPU. Technically, we can also do it on AMD and so on. There's nothing in the process that is you know restricted to one vendor or the other. And all we did effectively is we set our own you know compiler as the compiler for the test suite CMake. That's it. And then we just run it. Um, this is, you know, a breakdown of the results. Um, you see, you know, micro benchmarks, we didn't do that well. Single source was easier than multi-source, which is not super surprising. And um, what, what I really want to get about, like, for the last, you know, three minutes, is what happened, why, why couldn't we compile some of them, or why couldn't we verify some of them? So first thing is some testers is broken. Um, if you have any idea of OpenMP, a parallel four like the for part kind of indicates that there has to be a loop that follows. Printf isn't a loop or printf or whatever. So this is just a broken test. Um, never encountered in the test suite because nobody executes it with OpenMP enabled. And if you don't enable OpenMP, this is just fine. Um, so, so we had that. We had applications that use you know, char pointer malloc, which clashes in our tool chain with you know, other declarations. So, so that's, you know, apparently on the host we are more forgiving. But in the way we compiled it, things you know, just didn't work out. That's fine. So a couple of broken tests, not too many. We can deal with that. And then we had compiler bugs. So um, I only show one we had multiple or that we kind of found. This is uh, VLA um, arrays. And you know, client uh, complains that the size is not set, assertion, crash, all not good. We can fix those as well. You know? This is kind of why we did this, to, kind of, to expose more code into our pipeline, see what happens. And then, lastly, we get to the limitations. And they, here it gets a little trickier, because some of these are conceptual, some of these are doable but hard, and some of these are just, you know, we should be able to handle that properly. Um, C++ exceptions, I mean, <laughs> we potentially could. We could also just treat it you know, as a no-op and a trap, and say, okay, as long as you don't actually use them, you just have them in your code, you're good, but don't use them. So that's an option, we don't know. Inline assembly, okay, we would need to rewrite that, that's kind of really hard. Um, external globals, we deal with external function calls, but not really with external globals, you know, that point into other things. <sighs> Depends on your setup, we could make that work if we really wanted to, but so far we just didn't look into it. And then a couple of things like unsupported type built-in var arcs that are, again, we support long double, for example, on your, in your code, but you're not allowed to use it. You're allowed to like declare it and have it as part of structs and so on and so forth. As long as you don't do arithmetic with it, you're good. Um, but as soon as you try to use it, okay, and then it depends on the hardware, what we're gonna do. Um, that's pretty much it I have. So conclusion, we you know, took the LVM test suite and actually run the C, C++ programs on the, on the GPU. And turns out most of them will compile and run and verify just fine. And uh, the things that you know, we, we found, we'll, we'll try to address one by one. And maybe we should set up a CI to do these fun kind of things. Thank you. <laughs>